Alright, so you've installed Unity. You are ready to make games, and now you just need to learn how to code. And don't worry, I got you covered. So the series is going to go over the basic ideas and concepts and give you a good understanding on them to help you further build and expand your knowledge to help you make better games and hopefully make a good career off of it. So to start off in the project folder here, we're going to create a new folder and call this our scripts to keep our assets clean. And inside, since this video will be covering variables, I'm just going to create a C-sharp script and call this variables. So anytime you make a C-sharp script, you'll notice that it derives from mono behavior. You could, and you could tell a class derives from something when you see a colon here and then a separate type or class. And, and mono behavior is a type. So what this means is that this C-sharp class can be a component of a game object in the scene. So to make a game object, what you do is in your hierarchy, you can right click in here and then create empty or you can make a cube. But I'll just create an empty. And you can call it whatever you'd like. I'm just going to call this example. And to set its position, you can move this or you can use a transform tool in the scene. You have a blue axis and you can change the tools at the top left. You can rotate it you can scale it up and down and if you want to reset the transform of an object what you do is uh, on the game object you right click your transform component and then you'll see reset and if you click on that it'll set everything to its default so this is what I want to work with right now so um, I can attach the variables class to here and now that it is attached to this example game object the start function will run on the first frame as you can see over here and the update function is going to run every frame. And one more thing before we start coding, here I have a console window and this is the main focus of uh, this tutorial. We're going to be mainly focal on the console window as since we're working with variables, I think the console, knowing how to use the console will be great for the long run when you're making games. So now let's get to coding. All right, so I have Visual Studio open on the variables class that we created in the assets folder. And now what we're going to do is get rid of the update method since we don't really need this. <laughs> Alright, so the first thing we need to understand about variables is how to make them. And it is very easy. It mainly consists of three parts. So you have the access modifier. And the access modifier is basically what the variable is open to, to be modified or read from. So, for example, if I use the access modifier of private, then the variable that I will put ahead of this will be will only be open to uh, any functions when inside of this class only. Now public. Putting public as your access modifier will allow the variable to be accessed from other classes. And as long as those other classes have a reference to an instance or a copy of our variables class, then it will be able to access our uh, public variable. Alright, so those are the two common access modifiers you come across, private and public. Private, it will only allow access within its own class and public will allow access amongst other classes. Now let's go over the second part which is the type of the variable. So the type would be for example float and a float is basically a type of number and there's also int and bool. So we're going to go over all of these, so I'll create separate variables for each of them. So a float is a number, and now for the third part, it will be the name of your variable. So I'm just going to call this my float, but you could call this um, fun, oh uh, what, oh, no, you could call this funny or something, you can call it whatever you'd like, but I'm just going to call this my float. And I'm also going to create fields for int and a uh, bool, so let's do that real quick. So I want uh, my boolean to be public, so I do public so it can be accessed amongst different classes. I put bool because that is the type I want to make this variable and then I call this my bool because this is the name of the variable I want. And same for the int, I want it to be public so other classes can access it. I make it an int since an int is what I want this variable to be like and my int is the name of the variable. Now another thing about public variables in Unity is since they're all public, it will allow us to modify it within the editor. And what that means is, if you go back into the Unity editor, and you go to your game object where you have your variables class attached to, 
you'll see that my float, my bool, and my int are exposed. We can actually modify these variables. So I can set my float to 10 point uh, 99, 90, 900, <laughs> and I can set my int to 90. And modifying variables in the editor is basically setting the default value for your variable uh, when the game starts up, unless you modify it in the class. That's, that is. So by default, let's just set these to zero. And oh yeah, this is a bool here. Right, true or false. It's like a check mark that when it's checked off, it means true. If it is not, it means false. All right, so now let's go over modifying the variables. Oh yeah, and also you can create variables inside functions too. So these variables that are outside of functions, uh, they are they are open to all the functions inside of your class. So if I have void start and void update. You'll notice that I'll be able to access my float in both of these. So if I do my float, you'll see that it autocorrects to all these variables. And if I put my float in star, you'll see that it also work. And yeah, the scope of variables or like the accessibility of variables that are outside of functions, they can be accessed from other classes if they're public or not. And they can be accessed by all the functions within the same class they are declared in. A very useful thing that we can do um, for when we're doing, I guess, calculations whatsoever, is we can create variables in functions. And to do that, we basically get rid of the access modifier. So instead of doing public float and then say my float to, and if I put an ending there, you'll see that there, it comes off with an error and to get rid of it we just get rid of our access modifier and there you go look we created a variable in our function and we can now modify it in here my float too and then we can access it but in other functions like if I get my update method here again I cannot access my float too and look it's an error my float too doesn't exist in the current context and that is because making variables and functions will make those variables only usable by the function it is declared in. So my float2 is declared in the start method, and therefore my float2 will only be accessible in the start method and not in the update method or any other function. All right, and one more thing I want to go on over before we start actually modifying these variables in script is type variables, like actual type variables like a class like class type variables so if we do let's say public because I want this to be seen in the editor and accessed by other classes and I do let's say rigid body this is a common one that is used and it is type of class and I call this my rigid body there you go and these classes are basically different from the float bullet in because they have a state where the variable cannot find anything or it is just null. It doesn't exist or it cannot be found. And you could see back in the Unity editor that it says my rigid body and it says none. And this is the null state of a variable. And null can only be applied to variables that are nullable. So floats cannot be nulled because a float is a number. How can you nullify a number or make it a number not exist? Not sure how that would work. A bool cannot be null because it's basically just true and false. There is no sort of null state for the bool. And same goes for int. Int is a number and it cannot be nulled because numbers will always exist in this variable. All right, so now let's go on to modifying variables. So let's go over modifying our my rigid body first. So in our start function, uh, let's say we want our my rigid body to get a rigid body component or look for a part that has a rigid body so we do my rigid body equals and a common function that you'd use uh, for getting uh, components in unity would be the get component function and the get component function is the function that is provided by the mono behavior and this is also a fairly expensive function and shouldn't be run in the update method so when you want to initialize your variables in the start function normally do it in the start function and don't run it every frame and that's what the update function does the update function runs code that is inside of it every frame 
So initialize your variables in the start function, not in the update function. So my rigid body equals get component, and inside of these two greater sign, greater less than signs, we put in the type we want for the model behavior to search for, and we want it to search for our rigid body component. So we just type in rigid body since that is the type we are looking for, and the get component call will call on the game object our script is attached to. So our script is attached to our example game object. So if I run it right now with that get component call, you'll see it says none. But if I add in a rigid body component and then I hit play, you'll notice that it now exists. And that is because the rigid body is attached to the same game object as the variables object that the get component call is being um, run from. So yeah, that is how you would normally initialize a a, cl a Unity class or a Unity uh, component. Now for actual like general classes, like for example, let's say you have a public class of, all right, this is just an example. I'm gonna go over in depth of classes in a later video. But let's say you have a class that you just generally initialize that is not really a part of Unity or cannot be attached as a component. So what you normally do is instead of get component and then put in your type, you do your you do new instance of your class like this. But this is for something later. I'm not really gonna go over this now. All right, so back on track. Let's go over modifying floats, bools, and ints. So the float is a decimal number, and the way we'd modify this is since uh, floats and ints are both numbers, they need their own sort of identification that they are a float or an int. So let's say we do my float and 10. So this is pretty general, but you see how it is an int 32, our number when we go hover over it. To really show that it is a float, we put an F at the end, and if we go over it, it's now a single, which is basically a float. And as you can see, if you hover over the float keyword, you see system.single, which is basically a float. Now for int, we do my int, same thing, put an equal sign to actually assign it. And instead of putting an F at the end, we put 10. Because remember when we didn't put the F at the end, the float tag, uh, you see that it was a part of the int32, which is the integer. And for bools, they use keywords. So instead of like putting 10 or any sort of arbitrary number, we put false or true. So false, basically like zero, and my bool equals true. And that is how you'd normally as hard assign variables without any sort of math. But now let's actually use mathematics. So we're not really going to use the bool for math since it's really just a true or false statement. So we get rid of that. All right, so let's use the float for this example. So here we assign it to 10. And now there are a many different math functions that we can use. So there is first the add, which would be plus equals. There is first the subtract, which is minus equals. There is the multiply by, which is an asterisk equals. And there is a divide by, which is divided by equals or a slash equals. This is a much more um, clean way to write it. Uh, nor sometimes you could write it like this, like my float uh, plus 10, my float equals my float plus 10. But writing it like this is easier to read in my opinion, and it keeps lines shorter. So yeah, these are all the operators you come across. You have plus, minus, multiply, and divide. There's also some bed mass that you can use. So if you're familiar with bed mass, you'll know like parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract, all of that, or brackets. So my float equals, and then these parentheses, so you can do 10 times 10, and then put plus 10 at the end. So this is another way you can do mathematics. First we do 10 times 10, 100, and then plus 10, 110. Now we went over the math. Let's go over how to debug.log our variables. Or in other words, use the console window as this will help us in our game development journey a lot in debugging and uh, really understanding what's going on inside of our code. So I'm just going to stick with this little math here that I have, but I might just change a few numbers. So 12 times 10 plus 144 or something like that 
and let's say I want to know what the code is getting so what I can do is underneath where we assign the math or do our math yeah code executes from top to bottom so if we type in debug dot log and we can put in our my float so what this will do is it will debug a message to our console and the message will be our float number so if we go back into unity and hit play go back to console and you'll see 264 and this was from line 16 in our variables class and that is our debug.log function so there isn't just debug.log there is also debug.warn and debug.error so debug.log is just a general messaging debug.warn is like hey this might go wrong and then there's debug.error so log error there and log error is basically hey something went wrong so debug.log is hey this looks pretty cool here's a message about it debug.log warning is hey this might go wrong and debug.log error is hey this went wrong so if I go back to unity and I hit play you'll see in the console look one 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 so this is the debug.log this is the debug.log warning and this is the debug.log error and anytime you get an error you'll see uh, next to your collapse func collapse uh, button here there is an error pause and this will be pretty useful if you don't want anything else to go wrong once you get an error so if you click on this and I hit play and as soon as I get the error you're gonna see it pause the game alright so now the final thing that I want to do uh, before I end off this video is how to modify variables inside of different classes and once again it's really simple so if I go back into Unity, create another class, another c -sharp script, and call this, I'm not sure, uh, variables with two S's, I guess. And then I can attach this to the example game object I have here. There you go. And what I can do is start editing this. So what I'm going to want to do is every frame, I increase our my float value by a delta time. And delta time is basically the time between frames. So in the variables, what I do is create a reference to our variables class. So to do that, what I do is public because I want this variable to be seen in the inspector and accessed by other classes. I call it variables because this is the type I want this variable to be. And I call this variables class because that is the name of the variable. And now in our start function, we use the get component call since one, we are a mono behavior and the other class is a mono behavior. And it, the, both of these classes are on the same game object. So I can just do get component. So variables class equals get component. And the type I want this function to get is their variables class type. So just variables, there you go. So now in our start function, we initialize our variables class variable with a variables that is attached on the same game object as ours and as you can see it's ev it even shows in the editor and now in our update method to access variables in other classes what we do is take our variable that has the type that we want to work with so variables class type of variables and we do dot to like branch off into the different um, other components of the class and then we click on this blue thing if you're working with autocorrect dot and then you'll see our variables here because we can access it so variables class dot my float plus equals time dot delta time and del time dot delta time is basically just uh, the time between frames in unity so go back to unity and I hit play you'll notice that our variables class becomes assigned because in the first frame we run the get component call and in our variables class you'll notice that our my float variable is increasing with delta time and there you go that is how you work with variables in unity in the next video I'm going to go over the if statement which is more focal on bools and yeah I'll see you in that video goodbye